Is it safe to say that the federal government is now listening to the cries of Nigerians after all? Well, President Tinubu has requested the Central Bank of Nigeria to suspend the implementation of the controversial cybersecurity levy policy and ordered a review. Now, this follows a lawsuit filed by the Socioeconomic Rights and Accountability Project, SERAP, budget, and the 136 concerned Nigerians against the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, regarding the circular directing all banks to commence charging a 0.5% cybersecurity levy on all electronic transactions in the country. Additionally, the House of Representatives uh, last Thursday has asked the CBN to withdraw the circular. Now, joining us this morning to discuss this development is uh, Inyo Bong Usen, is the head uh, research and policy advisory at Budget. Good morning, Mr. Usen. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, good morning, and thanks for having me. All right. It feels like you know uh, a timely intervention, you know, that was regarded or that was needed by Budget, uh, Serap, and you know many others. Uh, t tell us about what you know, necessitated it. Um, and why you do not agree with the cybersecurity levy in the first place? I mean, yeah, thanks for that question. You have to look at this new policy directive amidst all the other, you know, policy initiatives, you know, that this administration has, uh, you know, uh, brought into brought to the fore, uh, from the removal of uh, fuel subsidy to the floating of the naira, you know, to the increase in the NPR the removal of electricity subsidy, all these, you know, are policies that have, you know, significantly impacted the purchasing power, you know, of Nigerians and impoverished a lot of Nigerians. And all of this, you know, hasn't come with commensurate cushioning effect, right, uh, with regards to the, the ability of consumers, of Nigerians, to be able to afford basic services, basic commodities, basic amenities of life. And we, we, we felt that the government needed to take a pause and actually look at the effect of all these policies, right, on the living standards of Nigerians. Uh, we, if you put this in context, uh, we've, you know, been at the table with regards to the conversations around uh, the increase in minimum wage forever. And, you know, government has not, you know, moved an inch on that issue. So how do you expect people to survive? Right in times like this, when it's very difficult for you to earn any income, when there are additional taxes or levies, you know, on transactions like this, and if you look at, you know, the effect also on, you know, policies of government with regards to increasing, you know, financial inclusion, having a lot of transactions that happen outside the financial sector, you're trying to bring that into the into the financial sector. You see that these are things that discourage. Uh, you know, those sort of policy initiatives, they are counterproductive, you know, counterintuitive to the very aims that government also tries to achieve. And so this is not something that I think uh, that government should be thinking about at this very point in time. What Nigerians need now is a reprieve. We need, you know, government to reduce taxes on, on, on people and ensure that, you know, the living standards of people, incomes, people's incomes, you know, increase and not the, not the alternate. Well, uh, I'd like to find out also, I mean, this is a very valid point that you make. There are, of course, certain, uh, many Nigerians would agree with it. So is it a, a function of timing? Do you think that it is the wrong timing or is something that should be done maybe at a, a much later? Or do you completely think that this should not be implemented at all? And I ask this because there have been arguments about this, uh, the legality of this. Some would quote that Section 162 of the Constitution provides that every fund that is disbursed should first go into the Federation account before it is disbursed to ensure that you know, it's regulated properly. But we can agree that that's not usually the case, in, for example, with the NNPC and a lot of other MDAs. So is it, are you arguing from the standpoint of because it is not convenient for Nigerians, or is there a legal angle to your argument as well, saying that this should not even happen at all? So you have two, there are two responses to this, and my response, you know, will speak to both, both ends. Yes, we're still not clear on the interpretation of, you know, that section of the law, right? Uh, the senator who sponsored the bill has come out to say that this particular levy was supposed to be a levy to be paid by the financial institution. So if I'm to interpret that, I would think that as a fraction, it should be as a fraction of the transaction transaction cost. So if there are charges on, the, on these transfers, it should be 0.5% of those charges charged by the, by the financial institutions. If that is the case, I do not have a problem with that. But if you are now going to transfer 
you know, those charges or levy them on the, you know, the, the monies transferred, and meaning that the, 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 the customer, the consumer would bear the cost. That's where I have a problem, you, you know, with. But to the other point around having, you know, these uh, kinds of special purpose vehicles or funds, ring fence funds to fund specific policy uh, objectives or initiatives of government. I also align with the fact that all of the revenues that accrue to government should come into a common pool, right? Especially with issues around security. Historically, we've seen how, you know, uh, the budgets, how allocations, how spending of, you know, defense, uh, or spending as a defense in nature or defense related, you know, are, are somewhat opaque. So are you creating another fund that can be, you know, if not properly managed or properly, um, you know, utilized as the case may be, will turn into a slush fund or, you know, something that creates an avenue for state capture or corruption. As you know, with the Office of the National Security Advisor, there's not a lot of visibility, not a lot of openness around how such funds are spent. And so I'm also of the opinion that whatever levies, whatever taxes that government aims to collect, whether from citizens or from the private sector, as the case may be, that all of that comes into a common pool where we have a full visibility of what it is that government earns. And then from that, you can now disburse to address the myriad of challenges that Nigerians face. But if you create that avenue where there's, you know, them, some MDAs of government directly tap into those sources of funds. There's very little you can do with regards to oversight, you know, over those funds, especially with very, 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 very uh, technical or specific areas like defense and security. Yeah. I mean, you know, I'm sure I've also read a few people say, you know, SARAP is always quick to sue. Budget is always quick to sue, you know. Um, and of course, you know, with the argument that if the government doesn't, you know, look for these little bits and pieces of uh, uh, policies here and there that they can raise money, then the, the country can't move forward. So um, what would your response be to that? That the current administration, somehow somebody just needs to make money to keep the country going. And if it doesn't, you know, create these new um, types of taxation, then, you know, government can't function. And SERAP might, or SERAP and budget might, you know, really just not be seeing things from the right, uh, you know, angles, you know, with their constant lawsuits every four market days. <laughs> so budget is not always quick to sue. Uh, we we do the GFM analysis. We don't take to court. We just support some of these statements with, with you know with facts. But that being said, you cannot have conversations on public financial management and it's just one sided. You know, every time you think about reforms, you know you are just thinking about the revenue side of things. What comes in? How about expenditure efficiency? How about the cost of governance? So anytime there are conversations around how government can raise revenue, I ask myself the question, are we raising more revenue? Are we creating a fiscal space for development or are we creating a fiscal space for state capture? Because if, you're not, if you do not address the expenditure side of things, you're just creating more revenue for people to steal. And that's why a lot of our emphasis, right, usually lies on how efficient or effective you know, government is with spending. What are the things that government is prioritizing, you know, with regards to how it intends to raise, you know, uh, uh, take people out of poverty? What are, what are, how does government go about procurement in a way that citizens get value for money? That is what is of utmost interest to me because that is what affects the lives of uh, your lives and citizens of, of uh, uh, the lives of the ordinary Nigerians as the case may be. You cannot tax people that are dying, right? If, you know, if you've not been able to create an enabling environment for businesses to thrive, if you've not been able to provide you know, basic amenities, if you've not, if you've not been able to improve your you know, human uh, capital development fundamentals you know, that allow people to get quality education, get quality healthcare, right? Involve the, themselves in, you know, valuable work that they will get returns and then pay taxes to government, there's no way your revenue is going to come. So there are certain things that you need to fix so that you are not just creating a pool for people to steal or fleece at the end of the day. 
That's the position yeah. I take on this. So, 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 what, when, so what you've seen, because we're going to be celebrating, I mean, well, I don't know if we're celebrating it, but we're going to be marking one year, you know, since the administration, of course, you know, came in May 29th in a bit. You know, does it seem like they understand these policies that you're speaking about, about, you know, you first of all generate wealth, create platforms, create a society that you know, enables people to be able to feed at least before you tax them. Do you think that they understand this, you know, or, I mean, do you have any faith that, you know, their policies will change and assist or rather and, and, and you know, work with these ideas that you're speaking about in the near future? I mean, I, I feel they, they understand these things. And that's why you've seen them set up, you know, several committees first to implement the Orosian Oro report. You have the Presidential Committee on Fiscal Policy and Tax Reforms. But what you also need to understand is that there are a lot of vested interests in these issues. And with any policy reform, they are usually losers and they are, they are, they are gainers, right? And the people who would lose out would resist, would fight, you know, everything with everything within their powers to ensure that the status quo remains. And I think that that's what this, you know, administration has been grappling with. But at some point, you would need to, you know, take the very, very hard decisions, regardless of whose ox is God, whether they are your allies, right, whether they are people who, you know, put the machinery in place to put you in power. But the truth is we need to cleanse the system. There's no way we would move forward if we do not cleanse the system. We cannot continue to do the same things we've been doing over the last couple of decades and expect a different result. All right. Um, now and that, um, around it. All right. We, we've, of course, seen several people share their displeasure about uh, the, centri the CBN, uh, the cybersecurity levy, the House of Representatives, also was one of the bodies that had criticized that and asked the CBN to withdraw the initial secular that was asking that the uh, cybersecurity levy implementation kicks, you know, starts off immediately. And they're saying that the reason they are asking that this be withdrawn is because that secular was ambiguous and it, they would need something that has a, a much clearer explanation. Now, whilst the president cannot order the CBN, but he has asked that it be suspended for now. What He's also asked for a review. What do you think that review will look like? Do you think that this you know, would lead to this completely being shut down and uh, the cybersecurity levy? Maybe then there would not have to be a review of the, uh, of the a review by the National Assembly and you know, the CBN would then totally have to seize this. And uh, seeing as the suit, there's an ongoing suit. I know you cannot speak for Sarah. But uh, is it time to maybe pause on the uh, suit? I mean, I, I would like to take this, you know, um, a bit differently. So this, is, this has been my problem, right, with not just this administration, previous administration, right? Macroeconomic policy have two main domains, the fiscal side and the monetary side. And there has always been this clamor for synergy between fiscal policy and monetary policy. Whatever monetary policy instruments that you put in place, there are fiscal implications. There are, there, there's impact on businesses, impact on the lives of Nigerians, right? And from what I've heard on the fiscal side of things, uh, I see that there's also a lot of resistance. There's not a lot of support on the fiscal side of things for the implementation of this levy. And I've seen this with, you know, uh, issues around the NPR as well. That's why it, it's very important that before you carry out any, right, sweeping or implement any sweeping policy as this, that has great impact on the purchasing power of Nigerians, right, that has an ability to impact poverty levels, you need to do your impact assessment. To what extent is this going to affect Nigerians, especially if you situate it within, within all other biting policies of government that are currently in place. You cannot just unilaterally implement certain policy uh, uh, initiatives of government without properly calculating or measuring the overall impact on the lives of Nigerians. And so I think it's, it's a good thing that government has paused and gone back to you know, do their uh, analysis in-house. But I think these are things that should happen before this policy, you know, uh, is even announced or implemented. And one thing that government needs to know is you need to give also a time lag, adequate time lag for policy implementation that so that people are ready, there's proper sensitization, there's even, you know, consultation on these things. Minimum 90 days. 
you would have consulted widely and at the point when you're announcing people have a fair idea of how it's going to impact them right and there's no confusion all over the place you have people in government who support people outside government right uh who don't support or people even within government who don't support you don't want that chaotic policy environment where you announce policies and you know two three days later you are taking back those policies even if it connotes that you know government is listening but it doesn't it doesn't portray government as one that is organized and very thoughtful you know around some of its awesome. policy announcements yeah you know um, i mean it, it, it just feels like you know a repeat you know from the last couple of years we've pretty much had the same you know reoccurrence of the same policy you know um, uh, propositions that they eventually take back after a little bit of you know outcry but it, it it none of it just really seems like we're moving in the right direction you know it feels like trial and error governance you know let's let's just be doing whatever whatever we feel like you know every two days but thanks a lot for joining us um uh, we hope to speak with you again and of course you know if there's other developments we'd like that you also join us and uh, share your thoughts with us thanks a lot in your bongo thanks for having me and have a lovely day you too